Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Rundown episode 21. Yes, I know we had it's, we had no episode last week, mostly due to the fact that we had I had to go to a family reunion of, met, of my girlfriend's family down in Florida. We were completely zooted the entire time because that was the only way that both me and her were able to survive that shit without causing a family feud. So we're back, as as it were. Also, and I'm eating a gogur. <laughs> While ha while having while having a face as smooth as a ba newborn baby's ball sack, yeah, Brian shaved. Uh, so I didn't just get gogurt all over me. <laughs> you realize that by doing that, you fucked up the shot for the video, right? Why? How? Don't worry about it. So I'll jump right back in. Aren't we good? Yeah, we're good. Just, just turn your shit back on as soon as humanly possible. Ah, but regardless, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the rundown. A um, lot of things happening in the last week. Uh, I fucked up and failed to get in, failed to play Fallout London, which I, which was my homework. So and I failed my homework. So um, we're not able to talk about that. But we can say, but we can talk about it. At a surface level, where Brian can just gush about it a little bit. If he, I don't know if you've played it. Wait, you haven't. You, uh, yeah. played, you, 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 you have played it. I have played. It. Holy fuck! The amount of uh, bug uh, crash prevention I had to go through. And mind you, I'm not a modder, so this was all very first time information. You and my uh, roommate's brother, who is a big Fallout head. Uh, we're both MIA this week, so uh, you, your baby boy Brian was uh, going through Reddit and Discord fucking posts trying to figure out how to make sure this goddamn game doesn't crash. That's my biggest pet peeve about the game. It crashes a fuck ton, but once you download Buff Out 4 FS uh, uh, Fallout uh, uh, script extender and a few other bug fixes, you're fine. It is an amazing experience compared to what Bethesda has been consistently putting out with Starfield, the launch of Fallout 76, even the launch of Fallout 4. This feels like a return to form. And it's fucking mod developers, Joe. I shouldn't be saying this about a uh, company that took five years that has only been uh, paid through like crowdsourcing and, uh, uh, you know, uh, people from the audience trying to support them but goddamn this game feels nothing nothing like fallout 4 and everything like a fallout game but set in a different country uh the voice acting it can be shoddy at times i'm not saying it can't be but it is fucking an experience through and through goddamn i fucking love this thing I right. haven't been playing it too, too much, because me, actually, you'll enjoy this. Me and the girls have been playing Borderlands recently, so that's been taking up a lot of our time. But, Which uh, one? Yeah. Oh, uh, we're starting off with one. I got the... Good, good call. It I, is It is a very different experience come from two and three, but it is a fun and enjoyable experience in its own right. Yeah, without a doubt. Plus, I wanted them to start on... The game that I and uh, the game that I played but didn't start because I feel like if you start with two and then you go back to one, that's a very very hard transition. It is, it is. It's um, there's a, there's a ton of quality of life improvements and just quality improvements generally that were not present in Portland One. Also, I don't care if you if you've got Bukaki all over your shit now. Just turn your fucking video back on. I'm coming back. Relax. I gotta finish the last little bit. <laughs> well, okay then. Before we get so into the Borderlands the movie, which was a mistake. Before we go into the Borderlands movie, which I'm probably going to uh, sail the high seas to see, if you catch my meaning, because I refuse to fucking to see the theaters. Um. Uh. You were talking about how like you wanted to like trim your beard without cutting the whole thing off yeah so i was saying off stream but i'll say it now uh whenever i shave with a guard i never feel like it gets everything consistent 
uh, I'll feel like there are, especially on my fucking chin and over here, right by my sideburn, like it just won't cut consistent. And I'm like, what the fuck is so going on here? It will. It will. You have to go through it repeatedly. Like, you have to go through it multiple times, and you have to, and you can't just be like lackadaisical about it. You have to go one, two, and keep track. And then, and, like, no, pay no, no, trust me. I let me tell you, I took the three millimeter guard, the smallest guard I had, because I'm like, listen. I don't want something i don't still want you know the long hairs i want that shit cut if i could just get small little hairs close to my face they're not sticking all the way the fuck out i'll take that right uh, almost like a five o'clock shadow but a little bit more right yeah i do that whole entire face i'm still getting like multiple times going through in it going through it both ways down 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 making sure everything is fucking even as even as it can be with the guard until I take the guard off, my hair is not even. Shit looks... I don't know if it's because my hair grows uneven in certain places. Well, Maybe it's well, that. Well, the thing is, is that you're a black man. You have different hair. Like, for me, I go through it multiple times, but I've got, like, one... one B, you know, two A hair. Like, I've got, yeah, like, I... very, very fine hair, even on my face, you know, so... You know, yeah, I'm in between three A and three B, so yeah, you're, you're, way you're, more curls. Your your shit's cor more coarse, dude. So you know, I think, I think, like, unironically, if you like, I think you should probably like ask. You know, if you're gonna ask anyone, like, ask you know maybe Noelle's mom, maybe her dad, then and, and see, because it's like you know the fact of the matter is that your hair is just different. Now, I do suggest. Regardless. I need somebody with a fucking beard. That's what I need. I need somebody who, need, like, need, shaves, but, like, need, still keeps a, you, a beard. You need a black dude with a beard. That's what you need. Like, like I still That's say, like, beard. get, like, some, get some fucking oil, like, so as for after you shave and put this shit on. It makes your shit softer. Mm -hmm. Specifically, you want to know why I put this on? So I can kiss Meadow without stabbing her in the mouth every time I want to kiss her. I won't lie, I do like to tickle the fuck out of Noelia with my beard here. Like, I will See, do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, but, like, the oil makes it softer. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, that's that's ultimately, like, the big purpose of it. Also, you know, I put a little bit of the oil in my hair to help. Just so I smell nice and shit. But, you know yeah. what I don't like? I don't like the fact that we have dick hair coming out of our fucking faces. Because that's the same, it's the same exact hair. It's all pubes. It, it, it drives me insane. Yeah, but this shit ain't cake. This shit ain't caked in like piss and shit unless you like, um, eat pussy some shit. <laughs> okay, but we have to deal with this elephant in the goddamn room. This fucking Boy, Borderlands movie. I called it. I, I know you did, and I never thought. Let let me make something goddamn clear, okay? Every time that I've been on this stream, I have known it was going to be a colossal. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not uh, saying. I'm not <laughs> saying you didn't. I'm not saying you did. I'm just saying. I, like I'm just saying for the masses. I called this shit back in what episode 13, 14, when we found out when I found out about. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Like when the like, trailer dropped. Yeah. Yeah. It was it, like like I saw like if just so. Uh, border. Off, stop making movies any outside of uh, horror movies. Because Thanksgiving supposedly was good, but this movie is trash. It what is at it, it right now. It is. It, a... it is. Here's the thing. This isn't even a case. A fucking nine percent. That's crazy. And here's the thing. And this isn't one of those. Even one of those things where it says, "Oh, this is a audience preferred movie type of thing." Like, go the, to uh, IGN. I didn't IGN gave him a three, which is was like, like the they only yes. give that to gate to like things that are like just like not functional. Pretty much. Here, yeah, IGN like, gave them a fucking three. So, I, like, like, just to look at the like the all the critics, like Borderlands. Wait, go up to the first one. The very first one. Borderlands. Borderlands is what, is what happens. Go ahead. When when you order Guardians of the Galaxy off Timu. <laughs> this How do you fuck this up? Thi this person, I think, like, I don't know why they gave him, like, a, po a positive rating. I don't know what. Oh, it's because they gave him a 2.5 out of 5. 
So visually, so fifty, so like, so like numbers wise, two point five out of five is a fifty percent. That's not a good score. It's just the system is taking a two point five out of five, like as as that. This person's like. Well, I will say that's weird as fuck because there are other two point fives that have the green as opposed to the tomato. <laughs> yeah. So. It's it, it's rough. Wild. Let's let's look at the audience score, like all, the audience rating. Like look at the verified rating, shall we? As someone who's played all four main series games, I was definitely satisfied with the cinematic adaptation of the franchise. Okay, there were a couple characters missing, but the overall theme of Borderlands could easily be felt. If you haven't played the game, then this probably isn't for you. But at least be happy. But I, that's the thing. It's not for people who have played the game no, either. No, because because literally the verified thing right next to it says, I don't even have words for how bad this movie was. I played the games, but I went in with what I thought were very low expectations and still ended up shockingly disappointed. The acting was terrible. Storyline made no sense. I laughed three times during the entire movie. And this is a Borderlands, by the way. This is supposed to be, like, this is a comedic game. Ah, this pisses me off because it shows... It, uh, we're living in a time right now where like, video game... TV shows and movies are having a renaissance. Right. Whether or not you want to say they're the best thing on the earth, I'm not saying that. But they're having a renaissance compared they, to the they, early they 2000s. Game movie like adaptation, game video game adaptations of like oh adaptations of movie, movie and TV adaptations of video games. Blah, can I please speak English today? They are not the best games on the planet. Of movies on the movies and TV shows on the planet, but what we love about them is is that they are faithful adaptations within you know the best you can do. You know, because like translating video games to you know the big screen and the screens in general is not an easy task. You know, like the fact, like like the Tomb Raider movies are trunts for like being bad, but I remember them fondly, thinking of them as like they're fairly decent action ish, -ish movies. You know, the difference. Well, part I'll even, I'll even disagree with you there, because bear with me, right? In theory, Fallout is a much harder show or a much harder harder IP to create in a visual format for the screen as yeah. opposed to video games. Borderlands right. is not an example of that. Borderlands is a cinematically pretty aesthetically pleasing uh, game, right? If they actually had Handsome Jack, if they actually followed, I don't know, what the fuck Lilith is, a siren, why she's the one who can open the fucking vault. Ah. And he froze. Ah, it's just so annoying. Does not follow the source material. Not even say down to the letter, just somewhat of the source material. It fucks themselves up. This is why Halo season two, uh, season three just got canceled after season two when they finally fucking focused on the games, but then they fucked that up too. So I'm like, stop taking creative liberties in a center in a universe that people love that people have such dedication to because you're never going to come close your script no matter how good of a hollywood writer you are is never going to come close to the dedicated uh to the love and dedication that fans have for these video games and the writers of these video games jack, 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 jack black could save this movie if he tried and he was trying. Supposedly, he gave like a great performance. He always gives a good I heard performance. He, I heard, for his every time I heard he, play, I heard he played all of the games before he played. The, he played the portrayed claptrap. Of course, he's a gamer. He knows, pe and he understands that audiences who are gamers have a real love and dedication to these fucking IPs. And also, like ah, the, the the story it make sense. Here's the thing: a lot of the Borderlands one story, which. Let's be so fucking for real. That is the story that should have been told. Like, it, here's the thing. No disagreement there. Here's my thing, right? You could tell the story of Borderlands 1 in, like, two seasons. Two seasons. I'd say you could even... You could even... I, I, well, if, I haven't if, finished if, the two, two first seasons, one, so. 12 episodes a season, you could do the entire story hour-long episode of borderlands one 
easy in a much better way that's much more um a uh, a uh, uh, narrative is narrative uh narratively pleasing than it how it was in the games because the problem with how things were done in the games was ostensibly that they were most of the main like the base game and a good chunk of the uh, uh dlcs as well were all done through text the story the dialogue most of it was done through texts by reading the opening but like the, the what the mission descriptions and the turn in the mission turn in screens a lot of reading was done for the story and there's ton and, and here's the thing when you do do it it, it's cohesive it makes sense it's it's emotionally stimulating and like you get emotionally invested but it's also like an it, an nmo lady type of feeling where you like are incentivized to s skip through to like get your experience get your level get your loot fuck the story so having an opportunity for a you know one season like the first season can be literally the first season entire first season can be just going through the main quest i would say even how about this let's see how you like this theory right if they chose to make borderlands 2 a series right and then uh, uh not a series but uh the first season or the second season let's say that's the like first two or three scenes right everything with handsome jack everything with uh, uh lilith the uh, uh roland brick and mordecai are already established characters in the universe you don't yep. really know their backstory that's how they should have done it then after a year or two of that being successful borderlands 2 the story itself is over right then you go back and do a little borderlands one here's the background on all these four characters how everybody fits into that i just don't understand why they chose to do a movie especially with people like kevin hart kate blanchett and fucking uh what's it called uh, uh jamie lee curtis i mean like who was on cast who because you know, outside of Claptrap, I'm genuinely like, why? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and here's the thing. It's like, I think that Kevin Hart has the capacity to do actual acting. He has repeatedly vocalized his <laughs> desire to do actual acting. And, and then he chooses these movies. <laughs> right. But here's the thing. It's like, I, I don't, I think that at least on the part of Kevin Hart, the problem was with the script. Like... He was playing That's, himself. I'm not saying that it was the actor's fault. The script, without no. a doubt, was it's, the issue. I think. And I, I think would, everybody will agree with that. And it's and it, and I don't and I would are possibly argue that it's not so much. It's it, this isn't even like uh, the Ghostbusters, like the Ghostbusters reboot, where like you had a bad script held up with the Herculean effort by like a solid fucking talent and cast. Like Leslie Jones is like one of my favorite comics period and she's and like from what i know about that scene from that movie like they held that shit up versus like i i i don't know like we both know like tannis tannis is is in the first game less insane but like I don't know if uh, well, Jamie I, Lee fucking Curtis. Like that's what I'm saying though. Just take a second. Everything that you see of her in the first game, in the second game, nowhere does it make you think. Oh, you know who should play her in a movie? The bitch from Halloween. I mean, what the fuck are we doing? What are we doing here? That's what I'm just trying to understand. Like, why make those types can I say, of choices? Can I, can I say something fucking terrible? Go ahead. I, I, I'm not saying this as a bit. I'm saying it because, like, if she cut has wears a wig or cuts her hair this way, she'll look the part. And I think she would actually, like, act a pretty decent job with it. This is not a bit. I promise I'm not being a dickhead here. I think Demi Lovato could do a good job of playing Tannis if she had picked her. Without a doubt, because Tannis is also, I don't know, pretty fucking young. She's not that goddamn old. Yeah, like, and also, when the fuck does this movie take place in the goddamn timeline? You have fucking Lilith, Tiny Tina, Krieg, Krieg, Krieg of all fucking people, a DLC character. What the? Don't get me wrong. My favorite, one of my favorite fucking playable characters in Borderlands too. Same. Don't understand why. Don't understand why he's getting the love for a fucking movie. Where's Mordecai? 
Where's you know, fucking Brick? You know what it probably is? You know what it probably is? They probably, like, kind of... Uh, I bet the cat, like, the, 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 the people for this said, all right, you're going to make a Borderlands movie. Here's, like, a quick... right. Here's, like, the Wikipedia for the storyline. Uh, and here... And then, and then like, the... And then, and, 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 Story. And and then the writers went on to like type, went on to r slash Borderlands and like looked at like 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 by by like best top of all time and just saw a ton of Tiny Tina memes, ton of fucking Krieg memes. Like they just they saw a lot of like fucking Lilith. They thought saw a lot of Roland. They saw a lot of Tannis. And then they were just like, fuck it. I guess these are the characters without ever like kind of like bothering to like put time into it also you know what it probably was also i think it wasn't i think the reason why the cat casting is genuinely what the fuck it has less to do with the casting and more of just like somebody's agent somebody said to their agent i need to get on a big like video game type of movie that's like gonna be popular of a big franchise where people saw like fucking fallout killing it people saw you know like Fucking what was the other? Yeah, the which are killing here, it before, here. like they fucking before Henry Cavill. They're they're they're. Let's very... see if you agree with this estimation, real quick, right? Go for it. I think we're going through the games of a service phase with movies slash television. I what I mean that, is, I think I think we've been going through something akin to that for years. And here's what I mean. You know, I'm saying. Uh, just let me say go this. For it, really go, for it, go for it. Go for it. Uh, how we saw the Avengers fail, the Avengers video game fail, uh, how we saw Suicide Squad fail. I think we saw the video game uh, video game adaptations that worked, and that was leading us into this phase of the uh, the film industry right now, where every film company is going to try to make a video game movie or TV show. They're going to either do great at it or fail, but they're still going to round hole square peg it, you know? Yeah, I think, I think, here's the thing, we, most aspects of the, 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 the pillars of the entertainment industry, film and TV, music and audio, video games, are all at the same point right now, which is the largest studios in like the biggest players, now granted, Video games are still a little better off to certain degrees. Uh, uh, game, games as a uh, uh, like there's there's still hope for some smaller artists in indie in the indie scene. Movies and TV kind of fucked. Like Sundance ain't gonna do it no more. But by and large, the big players um, in the entertainment sphere and all forms of the entertainment sphere are super risk averse. They have gotten to a point where they are expecting to spend hundreds like tens of millions hundreds of millions of dollars on media they are not they are unwilling to invest to take risks and so what ends up happening is, is that in the case of you uh, in the case of music you are only gonna like a label is only gonna pick you up if you have a pre like a following ahead of time you know pre ahead of time and then in and, and, and you're trying to expand in a non grassroots way and even then, like, they're still going to want you to have, like, a bunch of songs that, like, have, like, a TikTok-ready hook. Uh, movies are going, like, like video games do not want to, like, want to, you know, invest in already established IPs. They don't want to trick to make anything new. They want to do everything paint by numbers. That's the same reason why, why you're seeing a fucking sequel for everything from 30 goddamn years ago. Yep, it's also the reason why everything feels like an Ubisoft, the Ubisoftification of all video games, and that's why in, in the movies and video game, in, in the movies and TV show industries, you're having them, like, take intellectual properties from other books, from other, from other movie, from other video games, take things that have pre-established fan bases or things that have had fan bases for years and then just re-sequelize any new IP is going to have be something that, ups, that already exists in another format, therefore an already established fan base coming forward for it. So what so what, what we're seeing is, is, is that you have they, they don't want to take these risks because things cost so much money to make, but then these things are expected to make so much more money. And so they end up blaming the talent. They instead of like you know it, it, blaming the talent, they end up like blaming the workers. They end up blaming the IP instead of you know 
actually, uh, you know, trying to de-escalate from this uh, uh, arms race to the bottom. Ultimately, well, you know, uh, I'll just, just you know, let me, cool. I'll say this uh, very quickly. Um, it's exactly what happened with Tango Game Studios, exactly what happened with uh, Arcane. Uh, Arcane. Uh, also, and watch this transition, this is exactly the reason why Deadpool was as successful as it was. Because the studios had their fucking arms uh, behind their back being pushed into them. Uh, because that footage got released of Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool. Uh, you saw that footage, right? I didn't see the footage, but I know the story you're talking about. Basically, he uh, he he alleged like I, I think I since think since '03, since '03, since he was playing. Also, I will say, uh, not gonna say it. Never mind. That would be considered a spoiler. But uh, what's it called? Since he was in Blade, since Ryan Reynolds was in Blade, my man has been trying to play fucking Deadpool. They did the shit with uh, Wolverine Origins, right? And even during that time, that's when they actually started like genuinely talking about Deadpool being its own fucking film. And then that bullshit happened where he had no fucking mouth and he came out and he tried killing fucking Hugh Jackman Wolverine, right? And everybody was like, nah, Deadpool is dead on arrival. Let's not touch this nigga with a 20-foot pole. But it was because Ryan Reynolds knew the love of the character. He knew it. He knew that the love was there. So finally, he gets gets the chance to make the fucking movie because... He's given a budget of fucking nothing. He's given a budget of, of fuck all. Which it's and a he fucking amazing what they did with it. It's amazing what they did with that budget too. And it was also a genuinely good fucking movie. It was. That's the other thing about it. It broke records for rated R films. It was like one of the best selling, uh, highest grossing rated R films, if not in like the top ten of the at the time. Currently, I, Deadpool. I went back to see and it three Wolverine. times. I saw it three times in theaters. I paid. My money. I watched that shit with my grandfather. I feel you. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I don't get like I when I like I was I had I was a college student with no fucking money, and I still spent like forty to fifty of my hard earned dollars to see that shit three times. And now, Deadpool uh, and Wolverine, highest grossing rated R movie of all fucking time. It just. They're opening more possibilities in the Marvel Universe with characters that were never going to happen, that were never going to happen. And now they're like, oh my God, we love this character. Woo! And that's what the fuck I'm saying. I'm like, how can y'all under- How can y'all do this? See this colossal failure turn into a colossal success, but then with Borderlands, you're like, nah, let's just drop the ball and make a regular fucking film. And then you niggas have the audacity, the audacity to sit here and complain about how the film industry is failing. Yeah, nigga, because it's all about money. It's all about money. It ain't about the film no more. You're not gonna make, you're not, you're not gonna make insanely popular films if you don't take a loss from here and now and again. It is you, like if you're a studio, you you like. Eventually, pe- people are going like. Eventually, things are going to be so meh and whatever that people are going to just want to watch indie films. Like, like the inshitification, the like the 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 the, in, the inblandification of media is what you know makes people not want to watch TV or movies and go to YouTube instead. It's what makes. You know, people not want to play the latest Call of Duty and end up playing a dumb like 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 block, like block wars or something because the developers behind that put like actual time and effort into the mechanics and making the game fun. You know, and then or, or you have like people in the music industry who don't give a fuck about like the Billboard Top 500 and literally just listen to like five weirdos on TikTok who have a Spotify following of ten combined. Like that's what ends up happening. Like and pe- people end up like. The indie, like when the mainstream, like the the mainstream, the indie scene continues to grow in all aspects of media solely because, you know, the 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 types of media we, that is being created today is not engaging or compelling. And when something is engaging and compelling, it is it is it's not that so much that it is like so far above far above in a way like the best thing that's ever existed. There's very few games that are like that, 
but they're more of just like games, movies, music, I like that. And it's more of there is a level of effort put in here and risk taken that is not done any. Elden Ring is a good example of that. Baldur's Gate 3 is a great example of that. Deadpool Shit, is a fucking... Deadpool is a great yeah. example of that. You know, I even say I even say dumb shit like Sausage Party. You know, yeah, like, but then they turn around and try making it a fucking uh, TV series, and then I'm like, y'all are doing. I, right I, I I didn't even hear about that. I didn't yeah, hear about it's that. a Hulu Hulu original TV series, and I'm like, y'all couldn't have just kept it the movies. Y'all really needed this because awesome. I mean, it's Seth Rogen. Like he has the boys invincible. Like he's not starving for fucking cash. No, he's like, not. Like that's what I'm saying. And and also like <laughs> an invincible is another good example. The boys is another good example. Like when Seth you... Rogen as a producer seems to be fucking great. Like he seems to be yeah. amazing. He's like he's like you know it's and it's like even then like there's still examples where like you play in with old you know like even if you're doing like sequelization or like things that are part of a universe like. I couldn't give a fuck about the last 10, you know, paint by numbers Marvel TV shows that they came out with. Right. But every time that John Favreau puts out something in Star Wars, I watch that shit. Uh, John what to go? What did you think? What did you think of Acolyte? Did you watch I, it? I haven't seen it yet. Okay. I haven't seen it yet. Looks cool. Looks cool. I haven't seen it yet. Did you see they are going to release. Mandalorian and Grogu. What do you mean release? Uh, it's gonna be a movie. Oh shit! Yeah, that's. I think that's their end game. I think that's their eventual I, end game. I Make all these series and then end it with a movie. That's probably for the best. I think. I think ultimately we'll probably end up. I think. I think that's gonna have a happy ending. By the way. Uh. What were we talking about, Mandalorian and Grogu? Yeah, I, yeah probably not. No, because all like... the Mandalorians are dead. They're all dead, right? No, at the end of Mandalorian season three, spoilers. Um, they settle. Um... I'm... Very quickly, I forgot we're talking about Star Wars. I have to limit the timeline. I'm saying by the time of either the uh, uh, prequel series or the uh, the originals. Are they still alive during that? We don't know. I think. Okay. I think they're. I think what's probably happening is that they're chilling, um, at the on their. Just being secretive in their club. I get it. Like they're like I think I think they're start trying to rebuild Mandalore or something. Like I don't know. It's just like they 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 this is impressive. But regardless, um, I'm so oh. confused. How, very quickly, because this is one thing that I want to find out. And since you watch the Mandalorian, maybe you could tell me: Do the Mandalorians have any uh, what's it called? Any impact? Any uh, association with the clones? Because they're yes. based off of Mandalorian armor, right? So, so they are. Uh, and but here's the so the clones originally were based off of. A Mandalorian by the name of uh, Jango Fett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The he that he gave like a, a simplified version of Mandalorian training and armor and stuff. Nothing. He's not a Forge Master or anything. So it's like a lot of things. But were... they're based off of his DNA, right? Correct. Okay. And Boba Fett is a clone of Jango. But was basically like given to Jango as like a, an infant, and was oh, that's not his actual son. That's it's not it is a biological copy of Jango, but was raised basically as a son. So, yeah. Mm. So alter. So I forget one second, and Dave, right. I forget I forget what the last scene. Of the fucking finale was for different cars, blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, and I remember. Yeah. Oh, taking odd jobs for the new republic. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, um, 
basic uh basics yeah so basically what ends up happening at the end of season three is uh bo katan from the clone wars has reunited has basically reunited basically all of the mandalorians there's probably some stragglers in the galaxy and they are on their they're re trying to rebuild mandalore um and meanwhile in din Djarin and take basically adopts grogu officially and he becomes din grogu and then basically takes him on adventures and shit doing odd jobs for the republic Gotcha. Okay. And, and that's so that's not thing. Yoda. Because no. I know that was a big debate. It was one of could... Yoda's species. It's one of Yoda's species. It's one of Yoda's species. Um gotcha. and so I think so the thing is, is is that like I think the movie that they're eventually gonna do is probably gonna be the kind of intersection that will Do you think they're gonna Avengers it? No, I think I, here's the thing, right? I think I'm just saying, like bringing everybody together after having separate stories. The Star Wars trilogy that came out recently, like the new one, the sequel trilogy, mm-hmm. is deeply unpopular. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> it is. There are kids and stuff that liked it because, of course, they did. Like. I think I would I I wouldn't be surprised if they kept it around, and then in like another fifteen years, all of the pe- all of the pe- people who saw it as children who loved it are now adults. Like same thing with like Hayden Christensen, like being told we love you and shit afterwards because you know, you know people people who grow up and then love what they love, you know, it's fine. I think, um, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that. The next batch of, I think, what I think John Favreau is trying to do is show that he can deliver popular show after show after show. Probably gonna blast out the water with this Mandalorian with 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 this Mandalorian and Grogu movie, which of course, like that's of course, or season do well. two as well, huh? Andor season two as well. Ah, yeah, I haven't seen Andor. I haven't seen Andor either. I heard it's a people have been saying that is the best fucking series that they have made. Really better than Mandalorian. Surprise. They genuinely love that shit. I think it's because of how dark and uh serious the tones are as opposed to like everything it's, it's, else it's, 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 it's it leads into like uh political, you know, murkiness and stuff. It's like it, 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 it cuz that's the thing, right? The Star Wars franchise like at this point, shouldn't just be like fucking fantasy Star Wars. It's fuck that shit. It's we, we we're familiar with it. We what and and there and, and and I think John Favreau is doing something very smart, in which he is telling, and this is what you should do with large properties like this. This is what you should do with Rings. This is what you should do with Fallout. What you should probably should do with Fallout. This is what you should do with with the Elder Scrolls when they eventually come out with that fucking show with forty k like k okay? like. You tell, like, you want, like, fucking, uh, The Mandalorian feels like a spaghetti western. Right? Mm. Book of Boba Fett feels like a gangster movie. Andor is like fucking Snowpiercer or House of Cards. Yeah, like a spy type of spy v spy yeah. and yeah. you know in in in, in like old and in, in fucking um um in uh kenobi is like just in like a fucking like a tragedy type of thing it's like it's it's just it's just sadness but also like the only thing that continues the main story in any way or it kind of bridge it, like it all of these things exist to bridge like exist to bridge. All of this is John Favreau's goal of he, him being the person that gets to do the next series. I will say the only thing I'll spoil for the next trilogy. Is- I, I would bet is that uh, before you say it, I will say all of the things with the Star Wars license and stuff that John Favreau is doing. I bet you every dollar I got that he is jockeying to when they eventually inevitably say, "Hey, we're doing a new trilogy." He's the one at the helm. And at that point, 
people will be very comforted by that. Although I don't know how much well he'll be able to do with Disney executives up his asshole with show with with, with producer notes. That hopefully he has enough clout by then he doesn't have to deal with it. But uh what's it called? The only thing I'll say about Deadpool v War Wolverine regarding uh like a little spoiler, nothing insane. John Favreau's in the movie. And I just think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, it makes sense. Like 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 I think that I think he's earned the right to have cameo cameos and shit. Well, he's like a part of Shield or something. So like in universe, he's a part of the Avenger. So it makes sense. Makes sense, yeah. No, it's that's fair. Uh, last thing me and you got to talk about, because I think I think this is going to take us well into our time. Yeah. If not, no worries. But uh, what's it called? So. Meta's getting a me. car today. Meta's getting a car today. So, like, she's out. So we're good. Yeah, I just know Noelle wants to be out here. So that that's why I say it. Uh, yeah, what's it called? You and me. Next month. September 6th. If I'm off. Are definitely streaming the campaign of warhammer i will have to watch you play because i am very poor i am not a, I, I i i am still trying to figure out where i'm gonna get 96 dollars to pay my phone bill this month <laughs> no wait this is last month i still have to pay this coming months on the first so it's like you know fuck me right God damn. Okay, fine. Then we'll stream it on the sixth, because that that we got to do. We hella got to do. Have you been sure. seeing any of the trailers that's been releasing? I've been blissfully spoiler free. I've seen uh, okay. I've seen a I've seen a couple things. It looks good. It sounds good. Uh, and it looks very. I, I, although it's, I'm not gonna. I'm sure how visceral it's gonna feel until it would be in my hands. I mean, if Dark Tide is being was made by uh, Shark, whatever. What's their uh, releaser? What's their publisher name? Fat Shark. Fat Shark. If Dark Tide was made by Fat Shark, I trust. Who are these people? Is it Respawn? Yeah, I think it's uh, Respawn. Space Marine Two is developed by. Saber Interactive. Saber Interactive. Just to look at, let's just look at some of their pedigree real quick. Uh, they made a eclectic group of games. So they, so Saber has um, is also working on Space Marine Two, Jurassic Park Survival. They're working on that currently. Uh, John Carpenter's Toxic Commando: A Quiet Place: The Road Ahead. Exploding Kittens VR. Okay, that's actually kind of cute. Motor Hunter VR, Heading Out, Expedition Murder Game, Wildcard Football, Teardown. Teardown's actually like a pretty solid indie game. That's actually not a bad one. Evil Dead the Game, World yeah. War Z Aftermath. Okay, that's fair. Insurgent Sandstorm, Snow Runner, Mud Runner, Ghostbusters the Video Game Remastered. I actually hear that this was actually not that bad. That's a great game. It's a it's a good game. I played it on the PS3. That's a that's a good game. Okay, so Sounds, okay, so sounds, I thought yeah. it was Respawn, but okay, that Saber is nah. still pretty... You know Respawn just wants to make fucking Apex Legends and and, and keep cock-teasing of um, Titanfall 3. No, literally. You know it, why Titanfall 2 fa failed, right? Uh, They were caught... The, the developer... The, the executives at Respawn... The leaders of Respawn were cocky and thought that they could compete by putting... The release date no 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 nope, nope. nah that was because they left uh they left the one publisher got picked up by ea who was making battlefield 4 at the time oh and, so, they, didn't, uh, and, and, they, and ea didn't want and they were like competition you're you're not competing with battlefield what the fuck because this was four this wasn't that that was like the beginning of them starting to go down but they were still call of duty ask yeah <laughs> I think what twenty forty four is the one that really made it fuck up, uh, or was it Battlefield four? I think Battlefield four had hella bugs in at launch, so it was bad. I mean, so did Battlefield three, but like by the time Battlefield four came around, Battlefield three was like the gold standard. Yeah, literally, because uh, Hardline came out. I think in between those, Hardline gets a bad rap. I hear like I hear like I hear people really enjoy the multiplayer of it though. 
I think for what it was supposed to be, it was exactly what people needed it. Uh, a lot of the mid uh, mid 2010 first person shooters were either amazing or just or mediocre. Mid. Yeah. I still need to go play Spec Ops the line. I mean, I would say probably just watch somebody play it because <laughs> not that the story isn't good i just just going out of your way to find that game i feel like it's hard if i mean wrong, i own I'm it wrong. i own it so oh, okay i picked it up for like three dollars on a steam sale hmm. so you know i know it's one of those games that's like uh gaming history and stuff like it's just like a, one of like a great examples of like writing told with like video games so i wanted to give it a shot it just changes well. It just changes up the formula so much because you go from being the usual bad guy on killing the uh, usual good guy killing the bad guys, and then this is like, oh shit! I just killed like the majority of my squad because I thought I was right. Fuck! <laughs> like a lot of first-person shooters don't give you that moral dilemma. Yeah, and I guess it's part of the reason why it was like so big back in the day. But I definitely want to give it a shot. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, so, if ever, folks, you can uh, click off. I just wanted to uh, actually, yeah, let's just we'll be real quick with this. Isn't it funny how last time we were chit chatting, or like it was either that time or the time before, like I was like coping, I was like being like, I was like fucking black pilled, just fucking losing my shit, saying, oh my fucking god, Trump is gonna win, we're so fucked, we're so fucked after the assassination attempt and now nobody gives a shit and like trump's in a worse position now than he was a, like a month ago i don't even know what's going on now what's up um kamala, are you talking about just in terms of popularity for kamala because i'll agree with you there ah uh, there was a i can i be honest with you i genuinely think it was so many people so disgusted with the choices and having to face these choices again that anybody i think genuinely anybody if they put fucking burger king as being a goddamn political candidate for this fucking presidential campaign they without a doubt would have focused on him more yep <laughs> i will I, say hold on there, uh, go for backtrack it. just for a second nothing about trump nothing about karma I want to say, personally, and I hope fucking people are still watching. I know you just told them to leave, but this is this is what I expect the people who are online to do, and I'm doing it. I'm being an example of what I like to see, right? Watch John Oliver last week. Great fucking show. I, I, if you don't watch John Oliver, come on. What the fuck are you doing? Get the uh, fucking Mac subscription, and just, HBO Mac subscription, and just do it. He's just do it. So... He did a whole entire piece on RFK Jr. Now, personally, you knew where I stood. I was just like, out of these two idiots, Trump, Biden, Trump, Carmela, I still have that opinion. I'm sorry. I just probably won't participate, but it is what it is. Uh, I was having the opinion that RFK, out of these two, probably the least, least uh, you know, bad choice out of all three of them genuinely found out how wrong i was so here i am today saying i was wrong rfk is not a good choice the man does not respect you know science medical advice whatever you want to say he also goes out of his way to hurt people who are directly affected by what he has said and when he's faced with that he does not deal with the repercussions in a way that i appreciate so personally i think he's wrong there so I expect saw, more people. So you to saw do the hot mic call with Mark with Trump, didn't you? Uh, not even that. Uh, the one where he literally said about malaria or AIDS, one of the two, and then a country had like a horrible epidemic where like almost eight hundred people fucking died. Then he sat on a podcast and literally was asked, "Hey man, so uh, you directly, you know, made this happen? Eight hundred people are dead because of your suggestion to the president or whatever it was." uh of the country and he was literally like oh i didn't say that stuff i wasn't advocating for that my nigga yeah you were my nigga yes 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 you were so here it is if you can i'm a type of person who likes to change your mind if you show me actual evidence you show me a genuine uh what's it called 
uh, hypocrisy or a uh, example of these people not practicing what they preach or not dealing with the repercussions like a human, then I have to be like, yo, genuinely, that's not a choice I want to be with. So boom, there we go. And I just hope I see more fucking people doing this. Yeah, I also I'm also happy when I saw that Kamala like advocating openly for a ceasefire too on the presidential campaign, which is great. Yeah, good for her. Uh, here's my thing. I think personally, um, I probably won't even touch politics, meaning involving myself in voting for somebody for like the next five years. I think we just need a mass reset. We need no more incumbents. We need no more Trumps, no more Bidens, no more goddamn, no more Hillary Clintons. <laughs> She, she, I, I still hate that she opens her fucking mouth, but to, but to your point of that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just I wonder, that's his personal thing. Um, not, not yeah, Evan never not, shared that. Yeah, not, <laughs> not, not, not participating doesn't mean you aren't affected by, uh, you know, the shit going on. I, I, I want to remind everybody that's listening who might share some of my political beliefs or even not, not participate, like, like, it, like, the, Voting is the least effective form of civil engagement for making for making uh, things uh, uh, prog progress to a to a far left of center fashion. Remember, there is a lot. There isn't much that we as left wing individuals can gain by voting, but there is a inordinate amount that can be lost by not voting. That's that that is something I kind of like have come to terms with and realizing that yes, I want, you know, free universal health care, free college, you know, higher minimum wage, all of these great things. And advocating for these things, advocating for the social rights and the in in the in protections of marginalized communities is, is important and I care about those things. The problem is, is is that what do I do you as a person want to work towards those things by doing community organizing by doing mutual aid by doing all of these things do you want to do that under a politician who uh, under not politicians but under a a, a administration in in group in in, in in politique that is that either doesn't really interface with it that much or you know pr protects it nominally or badly protects it nominally or do you want to do it under a administration slash political party that actively makes laws where it's illegal to feed homeless people, actively makes laws to encrypt, to criminalize you for the politics that you hold, and actively fights against it. Or you are not, when you go to the ballot box, because when you go to the ballot box, you're going to get a politician that continues, that has, that continues to support Israel in some way, that is going to continue to support capitalism in some way. The difference is, is that one, is not one is going one is not going to one is going to either just be a bystander or you know not fight you too too hard on things that you're trying to progress and the other will actively try to kill you or kill your po po politics or kill your movement that is the fundamental difference you're you're you are voting not and for a party but the conditions that you live under and I'll just say, if you do share my opinion, but you agree with Evans in some capacity, participate in local elections only. Yep. And and and, 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 and here's a good thing. If you want to like vote for a third party, be my fucking guest. Um, don't vote for a third party that doesn't run a candidate in your local constituency. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that you can't run for you can't vote for a Green Party candidate. I'm not saying that you can't run for a libertarian party candidate but if you don't see a single one of those motherfuckers at every level like or even just at your local level don't give them your vote on the state or national level. the reason why is because you know like i this is more of the green party than it is the libertarian party even if the libertarian party has been taken over by the mensis caucus for the last few years and basically turned into right-wing doodads um oh fun <laughs> yeah well, I guess regular Republicans need a new place to go, huh? No, I'm kind of like the thing is, is that like a, a lot of the Republican, like the Republican, like the people that are like, 
your like Lincoln Project style Republicans, like the ones that are like never Trumpers, but ostensibly are like cheer on all of the economic and a lot of the social policies they do. They just don't like Trump's vibe. Now hmm. there are, you know, there, you know, at the end of the day, it's like the Republican Party. Yeah, of, JD Vance two days before his fucking uh, VP pick. <laughs> yeah, fuck, yeah, like, yeah, we, like, you have, like, here's what you have on the de the Democratic VP is every every white person's granddad that they like father that they wish they still had that they that they didn't lose to not Fox News versus Couchfucker McGee. Yeah, I I think I was just saying like see it's so hard today now after the 8 years of Trumpian influence for the conservative movement, but I do remember a time that, you know, uh 2014 and before where <laughs> Republicans were genuinely just like, "Hey man, this Social programs we don't really fuck with. We get it. Some people need them at times. Yes, obviously they would put in limits and restrictions. I'm not means, saying that they wouldn't. testing it but, to the point where it's useless, yeah. But like today, it is. it just seems like there is no, no open conversation about anything. It is strictly our ideas or bust. And I'm like... and. Yeah, I just and, and, and that started with the conservative movement. They they moved so far to the right that like all, all of the things. No, they trust were, me, I remember all the, the Tea Party. Yeah, they're insane. They're lunatics. They were apps. They're objective lunatics. And it's and it's sad because it started as you know an actual economic grievance. But you know the problem is is that it was you know weaponized by you know the far right, like far right lunatics. At the end of the day, you know. People like Bernie Sanders and Tim Waltz, like they, when they talk about like economic reforms, like like free school lunches and free breakfast and shit, and like things that ostensibly make pe like working class people's lives better. When I say working class, I mean people who whose money doesn't come from asset generation, but from fucking a paycheck, which is most motherfuckers, by the way. You know, the, it's it's very hard to like, you know, you. you the, here you want to know who the MAGA base is. You don't want to know well, who like the far right base is. It isn't, you know, really poor people on welfare. There are a, a good chunk of them, sure, but a sense of yeah. No, go, I know. When you it's go mainly... into like deep red counties with like really fucking poor people living there, it's not the really fucking poor people. They seem to lead more towards Kamala Harris. Well, the Places where they're absolutely like fucking on all of the conspiracy bullshit, right wing lunacy, are the burbs. Shit, even Beverly it's Hills the suburbs. Out here. It's the fucking and Beverly suburbs. Hills out here, my nigga. You, yeah. Let me ask you a question. You think downtown LA is voting for Trump? <laughs> nah. No, nah, but fucking. It's the Be Beverly, motherfuckers in Beverly Hills. Yeah. The Who are we kidding? Yeah, it's, it's, it's 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 fucking everybody it's 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 rich fuckers like here's the thing it's it's it is it is it is not even rich fuckers just upper middle class people who still work for a paycheck and shit live most of their life on credit card debt and a in in, in a hoodwink themselves into thinking that the motherfuckers living above the fucking highway on the on the north half of Beverly Hills are oh, like are on their side for when they're when they're more closely aligned to the motherfuckers living over on Skid Row like the mother, the, the the you you as a as a suburbanite are closer to are, are closer to me in terms of financial uh, like financial situation than you are to Jeff Bezos. And somebody who never worries about money ever and has to think about selling stock to make a purchase. I mean, what are we talking about here? That person has nothing in common with a common folk. <laughs> no, and and I think I think ostensibly I think what's kind of going on is. <sighs> I'll give Biden credit. He did say that he was a transitionary candidate in in the sense of moving and, from moving from the Clintonite perspective of the, the moving from the Clinton like the Clinton dominated '90s Democrat version of the party to the Bernie Sanders era, where where like you have a bunch of like younger people like left, who are far much who are like who are actually left and not just left wing as far as like right is concerned. 
like they're actually want like policy changes and taxes on wealthy people and trying to make this country better. I think so long, and I've said this repeatedly, so long as the right wing continues to lose elections, I think the more elections that they lose, the more fracturing will happen and the and, 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 and the more that the Democratic Party, I think, will ostensibly, you know, kind of slowly start to purge the old Clintonite mindset of like the coastal elite uh, of holier than thou attitude and embracing more grassroots urban and and rural approach like just a I think I think over the next 10 years we're going to see the Democratic Party start being a party of working class people again. And because you, let me ask this. You don't feel because this is honestly my fear. Um you don't feel that if Democrats start to win elections uncontested that a I don't even want to say this is what I'm trying to avoid. Hold on. I'm trying to avoid saying a Trump-esque figure in the sense of having conservative ideals. I'm saying a Trump-esque figure who is smart, who is very, very down for democratic ideals, but then, you know, starts a transition of something darker. That's genuinely my concern because I'm seeing it with how the Republicans were and where they are now. And I don't know I, I'm just so, like worried. I, I, like, I, hey, I, I think ultimate. Uh, here's the thing: uh, the Democratic Party. Because I, I definitely, I say this because I definitely agree with you that Democrats have the capacity in this country to consistently win elections, well, well, especially the if they they stick. win. Democrats win when people show up. That's the, that's why I was so fucking scared about Biden after the debate. Like motivation was deflated. But with this, with the change to Kamala, everybody being excited about it, and us constantly pegging, like finally calling conservatives and their opinions weird, and calling them out for being the weirdos that they fucking are, is like nobody's fucking talking about Trump. And when we do, we're making fun of him. We're not talking about, oh, this is so horrible. Oh, this, no, people are making fun of Trump now. Like he's in, and he's acting erratic. He's like, like Trump. The momentum for MAGA isn't working. You have to remember that fascists like being perceived as powerful. They don't like being perceived as like, they, they, they need to be, be perceived as normal. They want to be perceived as normal so they can show, for pitch their ideas as the nor as the status quo. When you rightfully call out the, you know, obsession with children's genitals, checking children's genitals and controlling women's bodies, and call and call those policies for what they are weird as shit and that also is, not conservative not fucking conservative no, i don't fascist. understand yeah I, that's, that's what, what it is i don't understand how a political party that is solely dependent on the government not infringing on your personal rights turns around and advocates for personal infringement i i can never understand this because at the end of the day that should be a democrat policy in terms of the government intersecting with a personal person well, uh, that, that, uh, that, that, that that and that's the rub here's the thing <laughs> the Republicans have coasted on 40 years of of an excellent rebranding campaign, saying that they are the party of freedom, of of, of being against government um, infringing on your rights. And, the, and here's the thing. That is a very bare bones and simple way of doing it, and they, have, and they have coasted on that. The fundamental reality is that there is good government intervention there are things where government should intervene and there are things where government shouldn't intervene places where government should intervene in elastic markets what is an inelastic market healthcare something where you don't Grab have cards shut no but i understand but i understand and i'm i'm still very upset about it but but no i did not what i'm talking about but i understand um like thing like what what should what should the government do like the government was going to be in the business of uh, making sure, like, like helping those in need, you know, by, you know, way of food, 
shelter, health care. That is the purpose of the government. We pay taxes for goods and services. We get them in return. What now? What the what? The, that is what the Democratic Party ostensibly has been for in the past since FDR, and that is what you know. The Republican Party has not been. The Republican Party has not been in charge of wanting that for years. It's part of the reason why they were the party of big business. Very quickly, you don't feel that because I agree with you. You don't feel that the Democrats are constantly being manipulated and hold on and pushed into making policies that are just as possibly restrictive or gives too much freedom. Because, like what? Uh, the, what's it called? The gender affirming care is a perfect example of this regarding children and schools. California mm -hmm. just recently passed a law about not your uh, as a as a teacher, you can't out your child as trans. Yeah. I think my personal opinion on this matter is the government should not be involved. If a teacher and a student have a private enough relationship where not a relationship, y'all know what I'm saying, but uh, uh you know, kinship. We'll call it kinship so people don't think I'm fucking weird. Uh, what's going on? If a teacher has a kinship with a uh, student that, and the student admits to being trans, comes up, comes out as identifying other than what they actually are, hey, uh, what they actually uh, biologically are, uh, what's going on? Hey, good for you. Awesome that you guys have that relationship. The government should not intervene in any way. It should not force you to out that child, and it should not force you to not out that child. So, if you... so let me let me let me let me put a pin in there right there for a second. So let's so what so let me let I me, just let... want to say my position my position is the Republicans force this on the Democrats. That's what I'm saying. I here right, and here's the thing. <laughs> Why would a child not want to tell their parents about their sexuality or gender identity? No, no, no. I understand that. What I'm saying is so, so, let so that gonna, be... Right, but here's the thing. Let that be a per case thing. Does it really... All I'm trying to say is does it genuinely have to be I a think, written law? I, I think that there is absolutely nothing wrong, nor is there any real negative repercussion towards preventing teachers, people who are in charge federally, uh, and, uh, who are in charge of the health, well-being, and safety of children from being prevented from taking an action that could ostensibly cause that child harm. Because there is a reason why a child is telling a teacher and their parents don't know. And if that teacher, and if that kid, and if that child made a bad judgment call on that teacher being on their side in the way that they hope i and, and that teacher does believe that like the the the, the like, like like agree with the parents and in that and in, in, in that will eventually cause that child harm i think that yes a law in place should be in place to prevent a teacher from putting a child in harm's way because they're so do you so, agree this would have never do you agree this would have never been a point of conversation regarding laws if Republicans never made this a part of their base? I th that's my point. I think that I think if I think the, the trans panic issue, like the, the hate, the hatred up towards like trans people who are reminder point zero, I think three percent of zero the zero one percent of the. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's something it's point, it's, it's, it's point zero three It's 0.03 percent of the population, mind you. Um, a set, like, like, do I think? Do I think that like if we wouldn't? The, this law wouldn't be on the books if that was the case. Sure. Would it? Would something like this kind of be on the books later if we were having like like implementing trans rights in the I law? Think I, maybe, I think. I think what I'm know. trying to say is I'm more comfortable with this being a school policy even if it's a district-wide policy even if it's a county-wide nah. policy I, you, as can't do, you can't do it with the school law. boards you can't do it with the school boards because lunatic parents are the are the ones that like can can influence school boards very easily and having but it this be a state never, law will prevent but that. what i'm saying is this was always a this was always a uh controversy regarding from the parents perspective prior to trump and this increase of uh you know trans hate uh discomfort whatever the hell you want to call it uh fucking 
I, I and all I'm I think all I'm saying is we already give we already have teachers doing one of the most hard jobs out there preparing the next generation to be not only good members of society but good people in general because school up also, the parenting slack on the, because most people don't parent their fucking kids and i'm saying we shouldn't expect teachers to be doing we shouldn't be expect teachers to be in a position that puts them more at odds with parents. Nor am I saying that they should automatically be outed. I'm not saying that. Florida's bill is just as wrong. I think all I'm saying is regarding like this type of sentiment, this shit, I don't genuinely believe should be a part of what the government focuses on. If this is a school problem, the let it be a school decision. government has to focus on it simply because right-wing lunatics will cause issues and this is exactly that that's the position that i was taking from the beginning and i'm glad i heard you say it because i'm just yeah. like if fucking if fucking democrats didn't have to didn't have to respond to the insanity that was coming from republicans especially trumpian republicans then without a doubt i think i would be just as gung-ho about the left the left side as you are i think i'm just saying I think I have this opinion of being like, I'm politically gray right now because everybody is not looking at these conversations and being like, yo, this is fucking stupid. We should not be hating on an individual because they personally don't feel comfortable in their own skin. How many fucking children go through that? I, I, I don't, don't see any children. reason. I don't see any reason why you can't be like gung ho for a left because like you, you, you through your own words. The only reason we're having to focus on this shit is because of right wing lunatics. Yeah, but nobody is being smart enough or mature enough to be like, yo, genuinely, we got to stop this shit. We got to stop it outright. We got to we got to actually put laws in place on the federal level, not state level, on the federal level to protect women's rights, which has always been my position, which is why I have so much. The, the ERA, to I think, is still sitting in a docket somewhere for a vote. How about, and here's what I'm saying, as much as we love to focus on Republicans for the last 40 or 60 years, what the fuck were Democrats doing too? Because well, if y'all no, are- I, I can actually party, explain that. I can actually explain that. So Reagan was so fucking popular that that the, basically the Democrats said, if you can't beat them, join them. And they basically did a hard push to the right where they, on, on economic issues and a lot of social issues too. And so what ended up happening is um, you ended up, that's where, that is actually where the both parties is the same mentality comes from. Because for literally up for like 20 fucking years, up until like the second half of Obama's presidency, both parties basically fucking were the same. Yes, they had some like a sensible yeah. change. That, now, that's not the case anymore. This. Well, let me say this. I genuinely don't believe it. I genuinely think they are just as, uh, not just as bad as the Republicans, but I'm saying just as bad as the, let's say 2012 from, from 1980, when did uh, Reagan win? Reagan get elected? 80. 1980 to 2012. I still feel like Democrats are the same people from that timeline. Because look the uh what's it called look at the management team right of the democratic party still nancy pelosi still being influenced by barack obama nancy pelosi still doesn't have a position Drew. anymore i think she retired she just retired she's still influencing the speaker of the house currently because she was former speaker of the house then also chuck schumer uh what's it called uh, uh, you know, all the top brass. They don't even listen to AOC, and that bitch has been on the goddamn team for like a decade at least. And, and, AOC, and, 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 and AOC is literally the biggest earner. She makes so much fucking money for the Democratic Party. Like, if she if she walks tomorrow... But she they, still can't even get... She can't even influence the whole Democratic Party Right. In general, well, well but, but that's also so because, that's what the fuck I mean. Well, also you also have like right, and here's the thing: it's like we are like the it is still like. But here's the thing: the 
I de- I think I think ostensibly like among the brass, like you have like your you know elitist types like Schumer and Pelosi who think like my way, like the like politics are exactly the same as they were twenty fucking years ago, and we don't have to change. But also, I'm I'm sorry. I just also thought of this. Time out very quickly. Also, what was going on regarding Biden? That is some fucking old democrat type shit where you keep it under lock and fucking key and only until a debate which y'all didn't even want to do but y'all set the parameters and he still failed at and y'all were still trying to get me to say oh yeah he could run the country for an extra four years i mean come on come on again not saying it's as bad as trump and the republicans but come the fuck on that's why i I think i think it's a i think it's less of a democrat issue and more of a generational issue i think it's less that's why i say in five years i I think it's not the democratic thing i think it's just old boomers and old gen xers are are they refuse it's like what what the fuck does tim dillon say about the boomers it's like they refuse to give up anything they refuse to give to like they they, they keep they keep they they not only do they pull the They're ladder fucking up dying and they not, keep all they, their fucking they, they just do they refuse to spend to, to like give up any power they refuse to give up any money or wealth and they and and they refuse to make any changes to make people's lives better they will they are literally raping this the the, the this planet for their last 10 to 15 years alive on this planet and they do not care they do not they do not want to increase social security payments they want but to let me say run this. out social security with their generation so we don't fucking have it they want they refuse they refuse to sell their fucking homes for anything less than a billion dollars and they refuse to fucking give they refuse to refuse to fucking retire because they don't because they they hate their they hate their spouse they hate their children they have nothing for them at home and the only thing that gives them any type of value in their life is being able to look look up from their office and and, and verbally berate the fucking 27 year old something working on, on on the shop floor like that is the baby boomer generation and that is ultimately but when it's our turn funny. Yeah. When it's our turn, and I don't mean you and me personally, but when the next oh, generation... Oh, no, of I've advocated for, like, retaliatory killing of cops, like, way too much no, 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 to no, no, no. go for, to go for <laughs> office. No, literally. Uh, what's it going on? But I'm saying, these people who are looking right now to get into politics, to join as they watch all this bullshit with the insider trading, uh, unlimited fucking term limits from what it seems, um, you don't think that the people who are looking to fill these positions are looking for those benefits end of life as well like that's what i'm worried about i don't think this is a generational thing i think it's just what happens when you get old <laughs> I, well the thing is, is is that it's it's not so it's it when you you, you have here's the thing you have because i've been you have to want you have to have something to conserve right bernie sanders like didn't become like any kind of wealthy until significantly later in life and he only got in the money most of the money he's made has been from like a book deal like he's not wealthy to the same way like nancy pelosi is. but he also was never a person with actual power which sucks i right, wish it was right. different but i think <laughs> i think ostensibly what's going to end up happening is, is that the amount because most of the people that will be elected to congress are not like, that we will elect to Congress are not going to be people that have entrenched wealth and have, you know, a mortgage and a four hundred one k to protect and a stock portfolio. No, no, no. I'm saying I th- thirty I, I, years down the line after I, they get elected. I think that the damage done by the baby boomers has fundamental. Like people who are almost in their forties now still vote left of center, left wing for stuff because most people under the age of 40 are broke and broke people mm-hmm. and you don't you don't become conservative when you don't have anything you want to conserve you don't want to rest- you don't you don't care that they're building you know section 8 housing next year apartment building cuz you don't own your fucking apartment you don't care that like I think they're you, building I a think skate park you're missing part of I, my point i think i think i don't i don't think that i know i know i get what your point is i don't think it's a, going to be as big of an issue ostensibly are there going to be people that do 
are going to like kind of like, oh, well, it's always done this way. Sure. sure. But I think the number of them are, is not going to be the critical mass that currently exists, keeping that shit in place. I hope you're right. I definitely hope you're right. <laughs> I think I think that there are enough people around right now that are angry, in our age and older, that are angry, that are desperate, that are broke, that are looking at all of this through a lens of like like I think I think and I've been talking about this since twenty and I and I started talking about this back in twenty sixteen and you know and I and I maintain this this whole time. If we can get to 2028, 2030, without the right wing overtaking the country and turning this into an authoritarian health state, we are going to see a 20 to 30 year like stint of, of left of center uh, and goodening of the country. We're going to see better wage laws. We're going to see better protections. We're going to see higher taxes on on, on corporations and wealthy individuals. We're going to see a lot more things that will make this country better. It's just we need enough old people to die and, the, and for the conservative movement to finally lose enough momentum where they are not able, where they are not able to just win if Democrats don't show up in mass. And I think that that is, and I think come 2028, 2030 at the latest, you know, if they have lost, if they have lost every presidential election up until that point, if they have lost, if they have, if they have like either lost or, or or barely maintained gains in the House and Senate in that time, and they have lost on the local level more and more over time, which is the trend that looks like is happening. Like in, in, in we'll see what happens this November. We can't trust the fucking polling anymore because it's borked. Um. So it, it, I think it just depends what, 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 where it goes from. I think that's the end of it. I hear you. I feel. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, uh, it's just me... enough. It's enough old fuckers have to die, and and and, the, and, the, and enough wind has to be taken out of the sails of the right wing, and we're on what do you track think... for that. What, last thing, and then we Let's gotta bounce. end it after this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's it got? What do you feel of Carmela's VP pick? Harris's pick. I think he, I think we all knew it was going to be a white dude, you know, yeah. but I think that he is, I think like this motherfucker might've been made in a lab. He's perfect. He is, he is. <laughs> yeah. Cause he focuses on education. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? He's been in politics for quite a, quite a few years. Uh, overall mm -hmm. people really like his takes. So, Alts is going to be choice. very useful at a combating a lot of the the the, the all oh, your all socialist attacks from the right wing, and two he's going to be very useful in getting more rural Americans on his side. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I wouldn't be surprised if he did a thing where he like start where he when he's out campaigning he says, "Tell you what, I'll make you a deal. If you can if you can outshoot me, if if you if I can outshoot you." You gotta vote for me. Like, for funsies little thing, like, when he's out and about. And people would fuck with that. Like, I think that Tim Waltz is a... And this will be the last thing I say before I hit to, I hit to the end screen. I think Tim Waltz is... Um, I would, uh, Meta wanted Buttigieg. I thought he was gonna pick Shapiro. She was gonna pick Shapiro. I'm glad she didn't. And I think Pete Buttigieg as an independent political operator for another four years is a much better choice. Um, I think, I think this is good. I think, I think he's, he's, he's a solid pick and I think he round and I think he rounds out like the, the ticket in a much better way than, you know, previous democratic things. And it makes the JD Vance pick a lot funnier because what he should, what Trump should have done was pick like a Liz Cheney or like some Republican woman to be his VP to like get more broad appeal but instead he went for the consolidation route he 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 picked vance after he, he beat biden in the debate in that debate and he thought oh i'm gonna win this shit wholesale so i'm gonna consolidate and and and, and boom up the motivation of the base by getting like this fucking little fashy fuck to be my vp and it was a huge fucking mistake yeah this is also why trump tried fucking suing biden for dropping out <laughs> 
And now he's writing fan fiction on Truth Social, talking about, oh, what if Biden comes hey, out? Biden and, out. I feel bad. This, that, like, and the other thing. What if he, he comes out during the next debate, page. during the convention, and says, I want another shot. I can be your president. Oh, God. It's like, it's the most fucking, like, cope-tastic thing I've ever seen. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for listening to The Rundown. I appreciate you, your time, your listenership. Evan will say that again shortly again, but I wanted to add on. Make sure you follow Brian at um, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, not it's um, uh, at uh, no dot two underscore Brian on Instagram as well as no dot two Brian on YouTube. We're definitely going to be trying. I de I definitely want to start doing the uh, what's on my mind again with you. I swear to fucking God, we're gonna start doing that shit again. I'm gonna fucking get you. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. I will see you guys next time. And uh, oh, we're back to weekly again. I think we're pretty much solid at this point, right? Yeah. See yeah. y'all. Perfect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to, you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hibmedia.gg/discord. Discord links there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at himedia.gg slash tip. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing and a dollar a month is a boot to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you and have a great day.